I think we're on. Hello. I think we are. Hello. Hi. Hello, everyone. It's nice Hi. to see everyone again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hope this time you all hear me clearly or more clearly. Oh, yeah. You didn't like that last time. We had a little uh, audio issue coming from Adi uh, Yaz's source, but it's all good. I'm just happy to mm -hmm. see some smiley faces for those people out there who want a little glimpse of behind the scenes. We just took 27 uh, minutes for Yaz to put on uh, red lipstick. Uh, in I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it was worth it, though. <laughs> It was, but uh, it's it's great that we still have this platform um, to connect since we can't get together physically for um, for our normal podcast. But yeah, um, so what have you guys been up to? Let's catch up a little bit before we head into today's topic, and we got a good one for you. We're going to share a project that uh, we all worked on uh, prior to the COVID nineteen uh, outbreak. It was uh, something for our local street paper called the Cleveland Street Chronicle. So we're going to play that video and we're going to get into it. Um, but first, I just want to hear what you guys have been up to this past week. Okay, so start with me because I didn't change that much of my routine, except that I was more cautious with my eating. Um, as you go, as you guys know, um, as you guys know, we have uh, been like, like trying out this kind of like, diet with each other or like let's say fasting program with uh, Mike and Sarah and uh, I had a breakthrough because I could hit like a lower weight range uh, the past week so I was so happy so I decided to continue on the journey and be more cautious with my eating be more cautious with my health and uh, just respect my body in these hard times and like just have like more fruits and more veggies so which is hard I know right now a lot of people having some difficulties to go out and get like fresh produces and fresh groceries which is like tough but I realized that if you get like oranges or like tangerines or clementines they will stay they will last you longer so it's it might be a nice way to get you a lot of like fresh vitamins and fresh, um, you know, fresh food. So yeah, that was basically the thing that changed with me. And in regards to t the things that I have been oh, watching. Whoa, whoa, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's talk about that. Let's share our experiences because that's a big thing. So um, Sarah, you joined us too. Like fasting is not mm -hmm. unfamiliar for me. Um, I've been doing it um, for years, in, but different methods and stuff, you know, like both of you know, I've, I've said before, like I was like close to like 300 pounds or something at one point. So uh, keto and fasting has been, intermittent fasting has been like my thing. Sarah, did you have any experience with fasting prior to our, our group's little, um, we did, let's get specific. We did a five, two thing. So for five days of the week, we eat our normal calories two days of the week that we decided on we'd restrict our calories to just 500 or below um mm -hmm. and those are our fasting days so it's not exactly like z zero it's under 500 calories and the choice is yours i think we normally drink broth sarah did you have any prior experience to fasting and how did you how did you feel we started about two and a half months ago right mm-hmm yeah so I've, I've never fasted before and when we started i was kind of nervous because I'm like, oh, I love my snacks, <laughs> and I love eating. <laughs> um, but it was, it was, it was. I think it was kind of hard at first. Um, but since we were all doing it together, you know, it was it was a bit easier because I was like, okay, I'm not alone. I, I just have to get through this one day, and then I can eat what I want to eat tomorrow. Um, and like after a couple weeks, it got easier. And like at this point. Um, it's really not too bad. I just, I probably eat like, um, I scramble a couple eggs in the middle of the day to get myself through. Um, and I've gotten so much better controlling my hunger. So I'm really happy with that. And yeah. has it changed both of your relationships with food, this whole fasting experience? Yeah, to some extent, yes and no. I will tell you why yes at first and then no, the no, no part. So the yes part is coming from the fact that, yeah, 
when you are fasting, your body constantly is adapting itself to like just ignore the hunger signal because the hug hunger uh, signal is just like a signal. Sometimes you don't need that much of the food. Specifically, so, it's called ghrelin. It's a, it's a hormone that triggers your quote unquote sense of hunger, uh, even though you might not be, your body might not need food. Um, that hormone ghrelin is what causes you to feel hungry. So I think in that regard, yeah, my body is better in sense of controlling my hunger and like sometimes ignoring the signal and sometimes just turn off the signal. But, um, oh, okay, um, guys, I just like want to let you know that you, you we have like long hair. Yeah, so. Got it. Okay, yeah, yeah, I saw the prompt. Thank you. So yeah, um, so in that regard, my I think my body is adjusting it very well. But still, psychologically here, this is the no-no part. I feel like that the days after fasting, I mean, the days after fasting day, especially if I hit the goal that I wanted to hit, let's say if I wanted to lose one pound or one pound and a half a, a week, or I want to reach a certain weight. And if I reach that, that week after my fasting day, it's just like that I become so happy that sometimes I want to celebrate and I want to like, eat all the things that I couldn't eat or I resisted um, so badly during the fasting days. Yeah. So I think that, yeah, that's the part that I'm still struggling. Yeah. I think that, I think that's a personal like, like thing. And I think it doesn't help that these short, like one day fasts are different. I think people have more of a profound um, relationship change with food with like prolonged fasting um, you know, things longer than um, three days. But I get you. You have one day, you feel good. And then the next day, you know, the routine hasn't changed so significantly. It's just you changed one day in essence. So the next day, I, 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 I say that because I'm familiar with it too. Like this past weekend, we had a target date and our target date was Friday. And I was so happy with like the results, like finally breaking into the 170s that I got to be honest with both of you guys. I want fucking buck wild over the weekend. <laughs> I just, there was no time window for me. I was eating morning, afternoon, and night. I was just, blah, 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 blah. so yes, I get you. Yes. <laughs> that is a struggle. But overall, yeah. you guys feel good. You guys both had results. Do you guys want to share your results? Yes, I want to share my results. I'm so happy uh, that we set these things up, the whole fasting program with two of you. And I'm really glad that you guys were like so open-minded when I because I remember I was the one who suggested the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And originally it was because that I I supposed to be the bridesmaids for two of my friends. So I decided to lose 20 pounds by April 17, which was which happened to be also my birthday. So I realized that oh yeah, let's like she gave a shit for. <laughs> <laughs> she, she called us quote quote the worst friends because <laughs> we didn't that wasn't like our first things to tell her that morning <laughs> you should have your birthday on social media it, it was like the the morning of april 17th it was like a group text it was like hey guys happy uh like weigh-in day hope everyone's doing well and then yes you're the worst friends ever <laughs> <laughs> hate you so much <laughs> The person that you are saying to me in the morning. We're just fucking around. <laughs> <each other. laughs> but it's but, okay. okay. I, I, but, I just try to be a child sometimes when it oh, comes to no. my like birthday. But we know, you know we, what? we know we know we are all messing around. But April seventeenth was your target date, and uh, yeah, and I, I lost. Um, so my original plan was to lose twenty pounds mm -hmm. in almost it was nine weeks. Uh -huh. or nine weeks or ten weeks but i just could like manage enough to get around like nine to lose nine pounds i mean between nine pounds to ten pounds so that's awesome though that's fair. this was half but i think it was something that i could never achieve i could have achieved without um i never could have achieved it without you guys and without setting this program and without the consistency 
So I think with every weight loss journey, you have to realize that it's it's not it's not a one night process. Yeah. It's not going to be mm-hmm. fast. If you use if you lose your persistence and uh, consistency in long term, you will suffer more. Amen. So yeah, definitely. you have to just take and it that's slow why and so it, many people yo yo um, because they don't make a, you know permanent lifestyle changes. They they hop on a diet which invariably you know causes almost any diet you're gonna is gonna lead to uh, weight loss. You know, um, uh, the the thing is is where where is your basal metabolic rate and uh, are you continuing uh, or are you reverting back to your old habits? So. I know because this is my first rodeo going up and down. I've like gone up and down since like high school by like 50, 50 plus pounds each time, you know, up and down, up and down. So, you know, this is uh, hopefully sustainable uh, for all of us because uh, you guys mm-hmm. both did well. Sarah, did you want to share yeah. uh, your results at all? Yeah. Um, so I think my goal was... I think it was 10 pounds at the beginning to lose by our target gate. And I lost about seven, um, which isn't too bad. It's right there almost. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's almost there. Um, which I'm kind of impressed with because even though I was fasting the, the two days, the other five days, I really um, didn't change any eating habits. Mm-hmm. And then I also recently, especially like with the quarantine and stuff, I found myself thinking for like a couple hours each day about what I want to eat the next day, <laughs> 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 which, which isn't great because then I'm like, oh, I can eat this and then this. And then I watch my mom eating all these like delicious things. And I'm like, oh, and then tomorrow and then the next day I'm just like, oh, food. But um, I'm trying to break, not do that. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 But, um, yeah, I, I'm pretty happy with it because, like, uh, Yasi, when you first proposed it and, like, I started thinking about my weight again, I was like, wow, I think I'm, like, the heaviest I've ever been in my life <laughs> and I don't want to get any further than that and hopefully mm-hmm. I can reduce that. Um, so, yeah, um, as long, I think as long as it keeps, like, going, like, slow and steady down, I'll be happy. Yeah. Yeah. And what I like about like this whole fasting thing, as you said, is that now that we are all in quarantine and we don't have that much of opportunity to go out, I think this is actually something that helps us to, if we are not losing anything, we at least maintain the weight that Mm -hmm. we we are in. And yeah, definitely. uh, yeah, because I see all my friends, all my family members, they are all complaining about gaining weight. And I think that I'm the lucky one who is not only not gaining, but is like slowly losing weight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because you guys know, prior to this whole quarantine, quarantine thing, it was kind of my goal also to hit the gym and go to gym and work out at least three times a week. And with this whole lockdown situation I couldn't do that and you know I'm not that kind of person who can just like practice at home or could follow I just don't have the attention like to do it at home and while you know I'm it's not a good thing to say but I am lazy to do it or I'm not like motivated enough to do at home workout so like some people do I've been doing at home workout for every day for the past week (laughs) oh nice oh yeah what are you doing um i'm just finding some exercise videos online and um doing some like pilates type things um of my own um combinations because stuff i remember from dance classes when i was a teenager so but which is which i think has really helped improve which is not i think it's also helping the weight loss a bit and helping improve my mood um so that's good yeah i think exercise has a profound uh effect on your yeah, like uh mental well-being or attitude mm-hmm. uh, that's not something new so that's good yeah that's good that everyone is because what yeah said is is absolutely true most of my friends too mm-hmm. they're bitching about gaining weight during this um quarantine because what else is there to do you know I yeah mean, uh, shit. I can't, can't eat. 
let's let's get that that drug sugar <laughs> in our systems make us feel better for 20 minutes oh it's a good 20 minutes though <laughs> oh my god yeah especially if it's like a donut and ice cream <laughs> Uh, okay. So, uh, cool. Great. I'm glad that, uh, we're continuing to do it too, because, uh, that was part of my mm-hmm. worry is that this is going to end, we're going to have good results. And then me selfishly and personally, uh, you know, I was like, fuck after this, you know, with no one watching me, no, uh, cause we're, we're also organized on Asana. So we, we keep a calendar of what we're doing, um, uh, each week for, you know, our, uh, sort of like health, and I was like, if I don't have to report there, I ain't going to do shit, <laughs> you know? So <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm, I'm pretty happy that we're, we're going to continue to do this. Um, cool. So I'm glad. Uh, anything else you guys wanted to catch up on or should we, what do you guys think? Should we uh, dive uh, into the uh, Cleveland Street Chronicle? Do you guys have any other shows you want to touch on or no. uh, anything you have uh, done since, uh, since the week prior? Uh, I wanted to share some like food recipes with you that I'm recently trying, but you can if you want. We don't have a time limit on this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when you asked me about like what I've been up to, I also uh, like discover it's not like a very strange recipe. It's just like a recipe to making like some sort of flat meatball that I call them. And then it's not a meatball. Yeah, so it's <laughs> like, like a like meat a, frisbee. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's it's kind of like so. I don't know what is um like. I know in Italy. Wait, 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 wait a minute. A flat meatball, a a patty, a hamburger patty. <laughs> so it's similar to that, but it is something that Italian people called cotolets or cotolets. Oh, uh, okay. So is it an Italian like flavored? Season? No, it's not. It, it has nothing to do with Italian. It, it is has, Persian? Uh, so Persian people have something like that too, but because it is, the recipe is contingent upon what you have available in the fridge. This is the important, the last, the, the most important part. <laughs> you have to take a look to your fridge and see whatever like veggies that you are not like eating that often. It could be cabbage, it could be like um, carrots. Um, like, I mean, I'm talking about the veggies that are not sweet, like cabbage, and I'm talking about cabbage, celery, and um, carrots. So, I will just like make them like I will like shred them and mix them with meat like okay. ground beef and make it first meatball then I will like make them flat like pancake style and then I will um, fry them oh. and you can put them in the oven or if you want to like make it like crispy outside you can use uh, like um, I don't know what we use that, uh, the kind of flour that you use for Kentucky chicken and like. Uh, just, well, they, uh, they do a dredge, right? So it's uh, flour, egg wash, and then, um, yes. and then you breadcrumbs. Can, so you can do that to your like meat patty or let's say flat. Oh, get a little and, extra, uh, extra yeah. crisp sort of like. Yeah, but um, the point is that it's not going to be all meat because it has veggies in it. Yeah, and yeah, the yeah. veggies, I think it depends on whatever you mm-hmm. have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can try it out. You do look thinner, yes, yeah, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, I think that my arms are thinner. I'm so happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, mm-hmm. this, is, this is something that I tried. I mean, I discovered, um, like, sometimes, like, last week. And I decided to make uh, all my, like, um, meals or snacks um, at least have, like, two of these, like, flat meatballs. So it's kind of feeling because it's so full, uh, feeling, uh, sorry, feeling because as soon as you eat it, you feel like that, oh, I'm full. I got my protein. I got my like um, veggies or fiber. So mm-hmm. yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I'll share with you guys. So you guys know I've been running this experiment. Um, I went on the straight carnivore diet. Uh, so all I've been eating is, uh, is me. It's also kind of an elimination diet, right? Since there's not, you know, a lot of variety, you can 
um, sort of obtain when you're just on an all meat thing, right? So I just wanted to see because I've heard um, you guys know who um, um, Jordan Peterson is, uh, the Canadian professor who, who sort of blew up like two or three years ago. Uh, he's been on. Um, uh, he's the guy that refused to use gender pronouns uh, to his students. Um, uh, you know, just because he didn't like the fact that he was forced to um, change his like language, so that sparked a whole debate. Oh, Anyways, Jordan, yeah. Jordan Peterson, Joe Rogan, they both mentioned that they've had like um, physical and mental ailments that were resolved through the carnivore diet. So uh, it got me interested in sort of going down that um, rabbit hole. You can go down it too if you're interested. Sean Baker is another doctor who went all carnivore. And uh, I was skeptical, but I just wanted to try something different. So in addition to our whole fasting thing, I also remained carnivore. And, uh, and I think it has like genuinely helped uh, my mood and my uh, outlook. Um, so, and then physically I have felt uh, a little bit better. So I'm, I'm interested in reintroducing other foods to see if that changes. I know the weekends that I go crazy, like I know there's barely any carbs, but there are still carbs in like heavy cream and cream cheese and sour cream and things like that. And when I go overboard and crazy and like add like cocoa powder and shit, even though I'm like not having sugar, it's like stevia or some other artificial sweetener. When I go crazy and I have like a scoop, because this is me on the weekend, I literally just scoop some cream cheese with my bare hands and then go, oh, uh, not really, but this oh, is what I love it feels like. <laughs> but by Monday, I all of a sudden don't feel good. And the last two or three weeks, I realized Monday, I'm always so, compared to the other days of the week, I feel tired. I feel unmotivated. Uh, I feel less focused. So it's crazy. You know, what you put in your body has like a profound effect. So what are we doing? People trying to solve like uh, symptoms uh, uh, and not like the root cause of what the hell is going on. We just like just take this pill and hopefully it gets a little bit better. So that's- Yeah, I have a friend who, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, I have a friend who um, she won't eat bread anymore because she says uh, every time she eats bread, her mind turns to like goo. And she can't think anymore. Uh, and then she stopped eating bread and she didn't have that problem anymore. Like, huh, uh, interesting. Yeah, maybe it's a broader... I, I always had like a... a it's like McDonald's brain, I guess. is like, what was it for me? That's what I associated. Like, if we eat this meal, I'm going to be useless, you know, sort of thing <laughs> afterwards. So that's what it sounds like to me. Yeah, but at the same time, we are not doctors. We're not recommending anything to anybody. Everyone's different. But, yeah, we're um, just sharing our own oh. experiences. I mean, our yeah. experience and our communal experience with yeah. you guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bread. Um, bread and cheese. Bread, bread sounds things. so good, though. <laughs> oh, my God. I've been obsessed with Ann Olson. I don't know. Or Anna Olson. I don't know if you know who she is. She's all over YouTube. And uh, I think she had a show on Amazon Prime. She's a baker. So I've just been <laughs> just watching her bake going, I want that pie. Oh. I, want that, I want that fucking cake. I, I used to joke, people wondered like when I turned vegetarian and uh, and that was like the impetus for my, like the start of my weight gain, people always like, what the hell? Like, how did you turn vegetarian and then gain like 100 pounds? I was like, well, because all I ate was cake. Was like, Actually, that, that, that's exactly the case with me. I used to be vegan or like two years, I mean, between three years to two years ago. And I managed to gain like, 30 pounds during the time uh, I was yeah. vegan. Carbs mm -hmm. went up and... Yeah, carbs up, yeah. getting up. And also because I was someone who was so frantic. I mean, I don't know of how, what should I call it, but I was so crazy about getting enough protein because all my parents and my friends who are like Middle Eastern and like meat is this, meat is this big part of our meal or every dish. So they were also crazy. They what is the main meat that we use? Yeah, um, beef and lamb. It's mostly lamb, like lamb. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Lamb is like. And then beef, beef is second. Beef. Do you guys second. do chicken or no? I know you guys don't do pork, right? Normally. Yeah, we don't do pork, but chicken. Yeah, but you know, still for like a lot of like at least 
older or more traditional Persian people, they don't like to consume like uh, white meat or um, chicken or fish as much as uh, red meat or... Uh, mm. Okay. Yeah. So all my friends who happen to be also Middle Eastern and my family were like, oh, you don't get it. Where do you want to get your protein then from? And because all I have in my mind was voices from them, I tried to like get as much as beans as I can so I could like you know, keep up with the same amount of protein that I should get on my previous diets or lifestyles. So that's probably why I get so much weight because when you eat constantly red beans or uh, red bean stews and like uh, lentil stew, uh, stew and soups and with a lot of breads, this is what will happen to you. I wasn't that type of vegan who is going for, you know, uh, oh, I will eat only my salad. No, I was eating a lot of tofu, like beans, and I was crazy with getting mm -hmm. all those, like, portions, crazy portions. Yeah, yeah. And that's tough with no meat because meat is, like, probably the best satiator of appetite. Mm -hmm. So if you're not eating that, like, it's a constant, like, uh, feeling like you need a eat for more fuel um okay cool 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 yeah i'm interested to see how kevin smith plays long term he's like one of my favorite um people uh of all time uh i just find him hilarious and i don't know if you guys know but he had a heart attack uh like a year or two ago so um for some reason he decided to go vegan and he lost a bunch of weight which is great because i want to see that dude you know, live and well and spread laughter and joy. Um, but he turned vegan and, uh, you know, I, he he's a self-admitter that he's not like vegan as in like healthy. Like he'll go for like the fake meats, like the impossible burger and constantly have okay. that. Yeah, I was, I was like that too. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> man, I went down that path and you might be all good for a few months, but like, shit, I ballooned. I'll, sh I'll share pictures with the with you guys one day. I know you guys have seen glimpses of Yaz you s refers to me like this. <laughs> trying to imitate the how wide my cheeks were. <laughs> okay, so why don't we get in? Why don't one of you two um, tell us uh, a little bit about the Cleveland uh, Street Chronicle um, project. Just give us a little introduction and we'll play the video for the people out there so they can see what our final product was. I just want to set it up with, um, we kind of had a week um, um, to do this. So not ideal. We were like cranking uh, aside from, you know, having our own lives, trying to get this um, project done in time. But I love working with uh, Yaz and Sarah. So I was all down for it. And maybe one of you two could take it from there and just give us a little background while I um, have the video prepped and ready for us to play. Sarah, I think it is your <laughs> area. Yeah. yeah, I can do that. Um, so the, so we made this, couple minute video about the Cleveland Street Chronicle, um, which is a street newspaper that is written by and distributed by homeless and formerly homeless individuals. Um, so not only do they write the articles and like if there's artwork in there, like draw the artwork, they can also, they also sell it and they can keep the profit for themselves to use it to sustain themselves. Um, yeah, and this is in Cleveland, Ohio, and I've always like kind of been aware of this newspaper because they um, the vendors are outside a popular landmark in Cleveland called the West Side Market, um, where a lot of people go to get delicious foods and awesome stuff. It's a great place. Oh my um, gosh, it's a fantastic <laughs> place. It's like a, a wonderland of meats and desserts and crepes mm. and ice cream and coffee and 
cannolis. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I've been gone for a minute. Sorry. Your, like one of your vlogs. <laughs> You're gonna make me sad. Wait, what? <laughs> Mike, you uh, had the photos of uh, footage of Westside Market in one of your vlogs. Oh, yeah. I visited oh, Cleveland. Yeah. So the first time before I knew all these cast characters and decided to post up here in Cleveland, um, uh, I uh, went and shot a vlog. So you guys can check it on my channel. I visit the Westside Market. Uh, thanks for the plug, yes. Um, so Sarah, um, uh, my bad, you were saying. Oh, yeah. So they... they um, um, that regularly um sort of um they regularly sell outside the west side market mm -hmm. uh, oh no I, uh, yeah you're frozen a popular place that um adults. am i back yet you're back you're back, back. thank okay. you <laughs> <laughs> sorry uh, it's all good yeah oh. So they, uh, okay, so these racing. vendors, these uh, people who, uh, you know, um, uh, have hardships, homelessness, uh, ness, um, they sell these papers and they can't sell these papers unless they also contribute to writing the articles. Yeah, um, yeah. They have to write the articles to be able to sell it. And um, the Northeast Ohio Coalition for the Homeless kind of like organizes them together NEOC. into a group. And we're like, NEOC, yeah, NEOC for short. Um and they help with like the printing. Um, so you just knew of them from like visiting the West Side Market? Yeah, I just knew them from visiting the West Side Market. Did you just like market. talk to some usually, random person or did someone tell you, oh, what's going on over there? Is there, you know, it's the Cleveland Street Chronicle. Like, how, like, how, like, what well, was your I first interaction? Go with, um, oh, yeah. I would usually go. Get your laptop. That always works. Of the West Side Quick Chronicle. What? Uh, you froze again. I oh was my god! Hit like, your laptop or something. <laughs> That's my uh, technical support. Hit their laptop. <laughs> Just punch my laptop. <laughs> I'm sure that will solve everything. I think it's more of like an internet connection problem. Probably. Yeah, yeah. It's saying my it's okay. Connection is unstable. Um, never. I will sorry people out there on, but, uh, what was the last thing you heard me say sorry yeah sorry about that I yeah heard I, okay the unstable. so sorry if I re, sorry if I repeat myself go but, for um, it repeat it oh can you can you hear me yes okay so uh, my sister and brother-in-law would always buy a copy of the paper and they would talk to um, the vendor and you know, I would just kind of be there watching them. Um, and because I don't talk much myself right in public. Yeah. But so they, they were always kind of in the back of my mind. And I always liked reading the newspaper after they bought it. Um, and when I was doing my master's degree and I had come up with a thesis idea, I was talking to my sister, Rachel, and I was like, Rachel, what can I do? Like, I, I want to make a film, but I don't know, like, what to make a film about. And I want it to be a documentary. Um, and she was like, oh, you can make it, you can, like, make it about the Cleveland Street Chronicle because it's, like, a great group of people. And she's talked to a lot of the vendors before, my sister. Um, and I didn't end up doing it for my master's thesis. But you ended up doing um um uh, building building up yeah yeah building up which is about cleveland's habitat for humanity right right another deserving yeah. topic yeah. but so so that's which, when uh it came across your mind as like oh this 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 is like a subject matter that's worth visiting uh, yeah yeah so i because it was it was definitely on my list of oh i would love for this to happen um, yeah, and then yeah. afterwards, I was like, oh, well, if an opportunity arises in the future where I can work on this, that would be great. Right. And then the three of us got together and we're like, let's make films or media and such. And um, that's exactly how I this. did it. I was like, yeah. let's make films. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it was me. It was <laughs> <laughs> You own gear. Oh my gosh! Yeah, the gear guy, the camera guy, as you were introduced to us as. Really, behind the scenes, that's what I was referred to. Like I didn't yeah. have a name. I didn't have like a personality. It was just yeah. yeah he's yeah. got a lot of shit. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. They told me, oh, yeah, he's the camera guy. You should talk to him. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, so that's a little background on how we arrived to choosing um, Cleveland Street Chronicle for mm-hmm. this um, uh, um, for this project. Uh, yeah. Talk, talk about why we, uh, we talked about why we chose the subject. Yeah, we, we chose, but not, um, so we were looking for a project because uh, we found this grant um, to make a, to make a documentary film that is right. through um, the Tribeca Film Institute. Mm-hmm. And we were, and we saw like, oh, this would be really cool to do a project with. Um, and so we put together the grant application within like a week because the deadline was very soon. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it was uh, available, but we didn't think about uh, uh, doing this or, or 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 collaborating on it until we had like like it's like literally less than a week left. Yeah. Um, but you know, hey, sometimes you never know. Pressure makes diamonds, right? So it does. Uh, um, Okay, so why don't we uh, just go ahead and uh, watch um, this and we can sort of get in into, I mean, this will give the viewers a better idea um, of what exactly um, they do. Last night, I watched the sunset and thought how beautiful it looked. I started to worry about how cold it was going to get that night. Last night, I slept in a porta potty. Maybe this will be my last night on the street. God willing, it will be. I was homeless for eight and a half years on the streets of Cleveland. Um, I'm a recovering crack addict. I broke my addiction by selling the newspaper. The vendors initially came to New York because they heard about another some homeless people in other cities doing this. It's just a paper that's written by homeless, formerly homeless or unsheltered people, and it's sold by them. It also is a way to have a voice for people who are often lost in causes that don't often get covered. I like dispelling the myths that people have about homeless people, and that's a big part of what we try to do with the paper. If you think all homeless people are lazy, don't want to work, once you meet one of our vendors and talk with them and read our paper, you change your way of thinking. I think it makes you want to help. Any of us can become homeless in this day and age. It doesn't take a lot. If you lose your job and you're unable to find one, you could become homeless. When you get an eviction and you lose everything, you could become homeless. We have our vendors who have to write in order to be able to sell that issue. My first article actually wrote about eating some chicken wings out of the garbage can. I love working with the vendors, I really do, because they have some very, very good stories. They tell their life, every issue. Well, none of us are journalists, but if you come across as a person who has something that you may be interested in, has something that will change your mind about homelessness, about poverty in Cleveland. People stop, take a look, and then they listen, and then they buy the paper and read it. And it's not just the money. It's a part of something that makes a difference in their life. My message to the customers is, if you see somebody selling one of our newspapers, stop and talk to them. Even if you don't buy a paper, chances are they'll change your conception of what a homeless person is. You both will probably walk away a better person for it. Wait for it. All right. All right, and we're back. All right. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I guess what we can um, talk about uh, is, a, you know, a little bit. So when I was approached, I'll, I'll show a little background um, just in terms of, you know, the, the, the challenge. The, so the challenge was the time constraint, right? 
because you don't want to, and I've done this before, is, you know, went out with no real directive from, from anyone, just commissioned to shoot a whole bunch of footage. We knew there was going to be editing, um, you know, some sort of like final, either a highlight sizzle or narrative short um, that would have to be delivered. But since there was like no plan, no, no nothing, um, oftentimes uh, what would happen is it would just invariably cause so much headaches, confusion, lot, lots of going back and forth because we're figuring out the story afterwards. And we have so much footage because we had no direction. So we have to cover all our bases that it just, it creates a mess and projects take longer and longer and longer. So I think the most important thing that we did for this project was with our limited time, we still used the first, even though we had what, like five to seven days, we still, two three of those days were really pretty much pre-production stuff so we were storyboarding we we sarah brought up the subject so we got to um do our research portion into it figured uh what the most likely compelling narrative um uh we can come up with uh set up meetings uh for pre-interviews with angelo the people over at neoc who help support the cleveland street chronicle and i think personally i don't know you guys tell me but i think personally that this is the most crucial part of um why i feel like this project turned out um you know um something that uh, we were happy with okay so um, I am not sure if I give your question right. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll just say it then. I'll 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 answer it. Um, you know that was definitely my experience. Um, um, hold on, let me. I don't know why it's. Let me go back to gallery view. Um, so I think uh, that for anyone out there, I guess I'll put it this way. I just wanted to get other people's inputs, but I'll put it this way: the most important thing you can do. Um, before starting a project is take pre-production seriously. You want to map out, you want to look at all. If you, if you want something smooth that you can deliver, at, you know, um, in a timely fashion, don't waste your time uh, with nonsense. You know, whittle down the story as much as, as you can in the beginning. Uh, you obviously want to leave some flexibility because you want to be able to pivot and change depending on what kind, what comes up because, you know, this is a documentary and you, these are real people and you start to learn some things but i think doing the pre-interview with uh with angelo doing all the location scouts being with people at neoc mm -hmm. um those were the reasons why i think we were able to deliver a a, a product like this in time um and yes. by deadline. yeah and neoc was also super receptive to us um like i think it's pretty funny that we uh went there on uh, without even like calling them we just kind of showed up and yeah. we're like, hey, we're thinking about making yeah. this film. Yeah, um, that's, a, that's like a, like, yeah, okay. super, super specialty. <laughs> so, so here's the deal. Um, yeah, as Mike said, um, we didn't have that much of a time to come up with like, you know, a very sophisticated plan to do stuff. So one thing you have to keep in mind when you don't have enough time is first of all keep things easy don't make things complex and like just go for it because if you mm. lose chance if you lose time on correspondence or if you want to like manage or schedule like meetings with people way beforehand it's just like a lot of time going to be wasted so we decided to just go for it try to we actually we called them very briefly before we uh went there i believe that um the, i don't think we asked about the we didn't the talk location about the film, though no no we didn't talk but we said that oh we want to like know more about um uh, this um uh, like this paper and if you guys have a have time can we like walk in and we ask about their timing and they said yeah come into the office something as simple as that we didn't even get connected to the right person at, at the beginning but we just decided to go for it and I remember it was three of us in the car and we were still like deciding whether we have to go to this location first or go to another potential location which was another church uh, that we, we oh, wanted oh, not location but like subject matter yeah sub subject oh, yeah. matter yeah because of the subject matter we want to like also there but then we decided to go for it 
and I push you guys that let's go, let's go and uh, let's uh, initiate the talk with them and try to meet uh, the director over there and see if they can help us. And as Sarah said, we were forced and, and help to us in a way of like giving us access because that was going to be the trickiest part with like the uh, the time limit, right? Because yes. you have to work with other people's schedules as well. Um, so the people in New York were just amazing um, to work mm-hmm. with um, yeah. because they were super accommodating um, and just like kind and, and generous people mm-hmm. with their time. They were so kind while we walked there. Um, they didn't even make us wait. They told us that, oh, please come to this room and we will be with you very shortly. So it was basically a very um, short wait for us to get into the people that we wanted to talk with, mm-hmm. which is like Molly and Christoph from New York office. Uh, so they try to, uh, they are in charge of doing a lot of their outreach program and um managing also the communication with their vendors which happened to be the people that we wanted to actually make our documentary around them Mm -hmm. so the first steps was like easy molly and christopher chris they gave us like basic and enough information to get started and they also were very generous in terms of like sharing information with us they quickly um, talked with like uh, one of the vendors as we saw in the video, Angelo, he's the main guy kind of behind the whole uh, distribution of the paper and uh, he's kind of the leader of the vendors and writers. Right, and the thing is, right, and the reason why we pursued Angelo is we knew uh, we knew certain criteria, right? The video can be um, more than three minutes. So we knew with the three-minute time restriction, we had uh, essentially um, a limited amount of characters that we could introduce to the viewer, right? And, um, mm-hmm. you know, with subject matters, it's always easier to create uh, empathy and sympathy if you, like, personify something like the, uh, like a paper through uh, a person, Right. So that was the main objective is, okay, we're going to choose a subject matter. It's going to be the Cleveland Street Chronicle who can best personify the spirit of this paper. And so one of the founders just made sense. And it was a super bonus that he had a great voice. He had great stories. Um, because sometimes you might set up a pre-interview and you're like, oh my God, this is, this dude is mm-hmm. so dull and boring. That's why you do pre-interviews is you want to figure out, you know, who's going to be your most ideal character. And so we got lucky in a way too, that Angelo just, you know, like to me at least had a, a great voice, an amazing story. Um, mm-hmm. and, and yeah, and so that's who we started off with and, and who we were introduced to from because of the fact that, uh, we met with Neok first. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, we were so lucky in that regards. And I just want to like mention that the part of the reason we at the very beginning, we fell in love with the subject matter was the whole, uh, the whole concept of like, dealing with ho- formerly homeless people who now are like creating a form of creative uh, media, which is like writing in a sense. And they try to convey their ideas through writing and storytelling so all of them are kind of have experience with the storytelling and Angela has also this like poetic side of himself as a character because he's not only writing uh, he's not only have his experience with writing but he is like writing poems which is he's a poet so he's into poetry and so he can like explain his back story in a very beautiful uh, and let's say engaging manner so part of the reason we feel that his interview was exciting or pre-interview was exciting was also because he's a storyteller in a sense and he can give us the right amount of information uh, about his back story his whereabouts now and um uh, what he see as a future of a uh, whole neon or whole whole story a whole um, paper so yeah and i mean and none of this is by like you know you know it, it, it's a process and i wish we had more time like i said that was like the major sort of um 
a challenge, but this is what we did. We did a, a, a quick pre-interview. We just met, um, uh, I'm treating him out to lunch. Um, had it, you know, was a, uh, a recorder uh, out on the table and just asked a whole bunch of questions. And from there you can sort of like take, okay, you know what, um, this could lead somewhere, this subject matter. And, uh, you know, so I think it was, it was important to include the poetry because it's, it's, it's something that made him unique. So we, we knew we were going to ask him to, you know, bring something uh, day of uh, uh, shoot day um, to read one of his um one of his poems, his choice. Um, and, uh, and so that sort of sets up the, the unique, just about, I won't go into detail about how we like set, set up. I mean, it, it goes more than just like pre-interview and then you figure out a story. I mean, uh, everything from, from lighting to how you greet the person you're going to interview to how you structure the, um, the line of questionings all help to sort of like, um, draw out this genuine because pe- viewers viewers know like you innately can feel if someone is being um, real and genuine and um, uh, is and 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 genuinely passionate about something and uh, I think uh, uh, aside from looking out with um, Angela for all the reasons um, previously mentioned we looked out because um, he seemed like a genuine dude and came across mm-hmm. that way uh, you know, as well, but that's how we wanted to set up, um, the fact that, Hey, it's, um, it's a dude, uh, who had an interesting backstory. That's why you should pay attention. And he was going to be our in into the paper. And then, Mm -hmm. so we set up, you know, talking about, you know, in the video, you know, that leading into Neoc leading into, um, the Genesis, how, like who it helps, um, because there is a major challenge and it just sort of like made sense for us, right? Because we came in, um, heavily volunteering from Habitat for Humanity and the, the, the biggest reason why they exist is, um, housing inequality, wealth inequality, and this sort of just ties into, um, the Cleveland Street Chronicle, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, maybe someone can, um, t- unless you have any more questions about like, um, technical stuff for, um, for those, I can, I can do a little spiel on that, but, um, I've been talking for a while. So someone want to, um, Sarah, what, during this whole process, what, well, like, what did you find, um, that was most, um, uh, interesting to you about this project what is your um during this whole middle of it mm-hmm. of trying to create a story p- prior to to editing what did you get out what what can you share what sort of enlightenment do you have um so basically what you were saying before going in with like at least some sort of a plan um so you can get some of the story but like be flexible because you know people can surprise you um and you're not you're never sure exactly what they're going to say um so just being like open and and like communicating and um i i remember one of the things that stuck out the most for me from when we first visited the neoc office um and we were talking to molly and chris 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 is his name right mm-hmm. yes okay yeah um and they were telling us like well we actually get like quite a few um filmmakers a year who try who come to us and like ask us to introduce them to all the poor people we know um and how they don't really like that because it seems like they just kind of want to exploit people for being poor yeah they want to sensationalize but um he was saying that we came in, we're like, oh, we'd like to make a, a film about the newspaper because it's something positive that people are doing and it's something that um, gives them a voice and then it helps them to connect to the community better. And he was like, um, he's telling us, it seems like you guys are taking a much more human-centered approach, and which he really liked, um, and which... I believe like all three of us were operating under, especially coming from Habitat Humanity, that like we want to take that human centered approach and make sure that we're not like um, sensationalizing and that we're representing people in a sensitive way. Um, and just throughout the entire process, I mean, I felt like we achieved that. Um, and 
I just lo- I just really loved being able to uh, talk to people that I normally wouldn't talk to, um, just going about my own day-to-day business, because um, they were all lovely people, and it was so nice to talk to them. Um, and having, I think having the camera in hand just like, I don't know, changes my perspective a lot. Yes. Why don't you dig into that? What, what do you mean by that? When you um, have a camera in hand, it yeah. changes your perspective. Give me a little bit more. Oh, uh, what is I feel mean? like I feel like it makes me think more deeply about things. Um, and I like I don't know. I feel like when I'm in public, I I'm not the kind of person who can just like walk up to people and start talking. I feel like I need to an excuse to talk to people because I don't want to like take up their time. Um, so if I have a camera. Um, then it kind of gives me a way to relate to people to open up that avenue. Um, if you get what I'm saying. <laughs> no, I, I totally, uh, I'm totally with you because this is how I feel. Although I never actually held the uh, camera myself before. <laughs> it's mostly you, Aranga. It's mostly you and Mike who are like taking care of our like footage and cinematography but I get what you are saying. It's just like that when you know that you are filming them, it just call, also kind the burden of the responsibility that you want to um, show that you want to think deeply because you don't want to be biased and you don't want to like create a biased image as well. So I think for me, wait, 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 just, wait, wait, what does that mean? I don't get it. Okay. So let's say, for like issues like homeless people, there are like some stereotypes in the society. I'm just talking about like the subject matter. No, okay, let's just concentrate though on the biased yeah, yeah. part. Okay, just yeah. what do you mean by that? Like you will come to each project with your own uh, like set of like, you know, prejudgments. Sometimes you can be prejudgmental about like a situation, but I think when you are well, I agree that, with that. You, you don't have- want to go into a subject prejudging things, but I think everyone has their own sets of biases, and that's that's why story makers are so valuable is because through our own life experiences and biases, we give our vantage point of a certain subject, and it's our job to... I mean, how boring would it be to just have a, a zero opinion? We've just sort of discussed this with, like, American Factory, right? Ultimately, mm-hmm. like, needs nowhere. Yes. You know? I mean, the reason why we... Um, chose the Cleveland Street Chronicle and we're so drawn to it is because it affected us personally, right? We had a personal bias for Mm -hmm. what they were trying to do. And that sort of informed what, you know, not only like how good we wanted to make this project turn out, but um, as well as it it also informed the direction uh, and the motive behind our story. You know what I mean? So I agree with you though, that prejudgment is something that you don't ever want to do in 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 any regard. Yes, and I totally agree with you in saying that it is absolutely impossible to just like put aside your 100% of uh, like prejudgments or like own biases or own perspectives because finally at the end of the day you will carry out your viewpoint, your lenses to the film or the subject matter you are dealing with. But what I want to say is that at least what I try to do whenever I am doing I'm like doing a project with you guys is like I just try to be more open-minded and I just try to like remind myself that I'm not here to convey my viewpoint I'm just here to understand the subject and the people and my colleagues and the interactions so I think parts of it is just like a conscious effort to think deeper and think more like flexible than what I used to normally. So I yeah, think- there's, there's a super fine line with that too. Cause I agree, you, you know, um, but given the circumstances with our time constraints too, and given just like my experience with sometimes shit can go off the rails if you don't have, uh, you know, an idea, bones, structure, you know what I mean? People can go, I mean, if we left the camera, I've had, I've, in the beginning, I've had interviews go like three hours plus, you know, for, for what? For three minutes worth of, of great 
um, sound bites. You know what I mean? So yeah. everything I do now, like uh, from that experience, you know, uh, has informed the way I treat things now. So I, I totally 100% agree that, you know, you want to have an open mind uh, and whatnot, but also these people don't know what we're doing. You know, we have a, we, we have a general idea of where we want to take the narrative, where we want to take the story. And it's our job too, to help, uh, to help them out bring out that part of the story because they don't have an idea in their head what the final product is going to look like. We do because we've had all these meetings uh, uh, in person, Asana, whatever. We've scripted out, you know, things. Um, so yes, on the one hand, we want to be able to adapt because there could be a, a revelation that we didn't know about or maybe a person that we just need to interview that we just were never introduced to. You know what yeah. I mean? So you want to keep yeah. it uh, open, but at the same time, you don't want to be so open that you're like unprepared, I guess is what I'm saying is we were super prepared. And what, like, that was one of the things that informed me too, is you want to, so I'll put it this way. You want to be as prepared as possible. I think it was the director of Emma or something like that. Um, there's this like famous story where um, this director of this uh, Oscar winning film every day, every night stayed up at all hours prepping the next day, the tiniest details, prep, 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 prep. prep. Notes, yes. notes, 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 notes. And then in the morning, he would rip the notes up and then go on to the set, you know? So he trusted that he did the preparation, but by physically throwing out the notes, he knew that he was, it, it's still in there, but he knew that um, without having to refer to the notes, it opened it up to be open, I guess. Yeah, I didn't say yeah. that right. But it, it, it was a, rem a physical reminder by him tossing out mm -hmm. the notes that he should still remain open. And I think that's, that's what we try to do. I think that's what we uh, I think, did, did give in our we time. Did do that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And yes, comparing it to um, the preparation, comparing it to when um, I did my film at Habitat for Humanity building up. Um, my preparation was not nearly as good. <laughs> And I ended up with like well, that was your of, project sort that of. That was thing. my project, yeah. You know, so, so I I I had preparation, and I you know had to like write proposals and do all this thinking. Um, but like thinking about like the specific shots or right. something like took me a while of filming to figure out. So I ended up with like a couple hundred hours of film for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah for a 20 that. minute film. Yeah, but, and that's what you don't want. I mean, that's how you end yeah. up with like over, you know, 100 terabytes of footage just because you've had projects where you've had to just, you had no clue and no idea, you know? Yeah. Um, so, so, with, you know, more preparation, you can ease that part of the, because um, post production could be a breeze or it could be a pain in the ass and take a ton of time. You know what I mean? And the only way you can speed up post production is by having a good, pre-production um mm -hmm. so yeah and especially when you're working with the team now that uh yaz and i were involved with uh with this project i know we kind of like were involved but not really in terms of the habitat for um uh humanity uh doc i know we kind of did like different variations on the project oh yeah um, yeah i i wouldn't i wouldn't have been able to finish it without your guys's help <laughs> Um, well, I mean, yeah. um, but I, I just bring that up because when yeah. you work in a uh, in a team, you got to make sure everyone is on board and on the same page. And just yeah. by just by the act of discussing it with um, each other, mm -hmm. we're essentially getting more prepared. So you know, it's not uh, you know necessarily uh, you know uh, uh, a byproduct of you not wanting to prepare. It's just the fact that we're working together as a team makes us more prepared as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, I started that out alone. So. Yeah. 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 yeah definitely. I mean, cause there's so much to think about, you know, too. Um, mm -hmm. I'll uh, dive uh, just a, a tad into the um, uh, technical stuff. So we shot over the course, we shot in, um, Angelo's interview one day, right? Yaz. Yes. Um, yeah. One day, and usually, you know, if you need um, uh, B-roll or, or pickups, you'll have access to them. You want to do that um, either the same day or the next day. Unfortunately, Angelo's schedule uh, permitted us only one day, so there were no extra pickups, no uh, extra B-roll with him um, shot. Um, we interviewed Tony, who was part of NEOC that you saw in the film, um, you know, that, that happened in less than an hour. And that was a byproduct of us looking at Angelo's mm -hmm. and realizing, okay, we, we need, there are certain points that we didn't get around to um, that um, needs sort of 
smooth to make our story smoother um so we had a second day of shooting then and then i think yes did you go somewhere and then sarah did we shoot um some extra b-roll okay so i just gotta yeah i have to feel you guys in that's exactly what happened so not only we have a short amount of time a week to complete uh, the the shooting i was about to take a trip to florida Oh, that life. was a Florida trip. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we were <laughs> well, busting our asses editing. This <laughs> lady over here was sent was texting us pictures on a fucking beach, blue skies, green greens, warm temperatures. Meanwhile, it's and it was in January, so it, it was, was it? snowing. Oh, yeah, 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 it was snowing the weekend, and it was cold as shit here. <laughs> bastard yes yeah i, I am so like i so feel guilty about oh no don't, not being don't. there for you like i have to tell you this you shit. i was there 100 percent for you like electronically I oh was yeah, yeah. No, yeah, no, no, yeah, no. We yeah, ended up we feeling were. bad because you skipped out on like a club. Like yeah, she had VIP access to a club, and she ended up just sitting in front of a laptop as we were fucking fiddling around yeah. with our. But the- Correction, it wasn't the VIP access, but we got the pass for like a very like... Um, it's about status, Yaz. The viewers okay. didn't need to know that. You were VIP in Florida. Yeah. Fucking Pickle no, was about to meet I'm you. Not going to... No, no. You're both frozen now. Pay $1,000 for just like some... Yeah, discounted pa- uh, pass for like your famous oh, club. No. But now it's my it's end. Cost- my internet is unstable, guys. I just yeah, you froze. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're back though. Okay, great. So yeah, I wasn't there for you in the very sensitive times of like uh, editing it, but I was there all the way. No, like, well, like, like I said, you know, the, the biggest part was the pre-production. So, um, I, I knew, I knew certain things, you know, our characters were going to be limited. That's how we can make the deadline. Uh, I knew we had to have a plan. That's how we're going to make the deadline. I knew our, our story has to be simple. So one character story, no supplementary characters other than Tony, because we needed to fill in a, a few things, a few points, but we didn't need any specialized characters to talk about, um, to give like special opinions on anything like that. And then the other thing is, I knew with editing, uh, we weren't going to do anything fancy. We're just going to, uh, you know, keep the tone. Three minutes, not enough to really change tones. You can, but it just takes more work and more effort. And I just knew with the time limit, we're going to, we're going to stick with, uh, with a certain tone, we're going to concentrate heavily on the character of Angelo, and so that made editing fairly simple. And it was good to uh, edit with Sarah too, you know, because even though it's a three-minute video, and even though we were prepared, and even though we structured, I mean, we thought about everything down to not just like the questions, but lens selection, because we knew we wanted to convey certain things, right? So you don't want to convey, you don't want to convey. Uh, 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 you don't want to convey, like, you don't want to choose a wide angle lens, uh, uh, shooting, um, you know, at an, uh, uh, up angle on someone because it reads a certain way. Right. I mean, like Terry Gillum does that, right. It reads distorted and weird and stuff like that. So lens selection is important too, because, you know, you see and think with your eyes as well, but, uh, sorry, I, I got off track there, but so everything is thought out. And even with all of that, our interview with Angelo was over an hour. So we had an hour worth of Angelo talking and we have to whittle that down to not just three minutes because it's, you don't just have talking for three minutes, right? We have another person that we interviewed, Tony. So that's another 30 minutes. And then part of editing, part of the biggest thing is our utilization of space, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we need to not change, not ruin the integrity of what Angelo is saying, but whittle it down in a way where it fits our time constraints, you know? So being able to work with Sarah on that was great because, you know, you look at something over and over and over and over and over again, and it it just starts to, it just starts to be all the same. You can't see shit anymore. You you really, you really either need someone else to look at it or you need a break from it. Or you need a break, which is what we didn't have. So that's super valuable, you know? Mm -hmm. I had my break early, my (laughs) my flying to Florida. (laughs) Right, right, yeah. And I I remember being super like persistent about like we need to have Angelo's poem in the video. (laughs) 
Because well, I mean, I, that's why we shot it, right? I mean, that, yeah. it was a, you know, a, um, a pre-production decision. Um, you know, he mm-hmm. mentioned it. We got a copy of the paper. One of uh, Angela's poems was on there. So that was a specific directive is we got to make mm-hmm. sure we ask Angela to bring something, uh, one of his poems for, for him yes. to read. You know what I yeah. mean? So, um, yeah, okay. So we got down to, I, I guess, you know what, we don't really need to dive into, if you have any technical questions, I can answer that for you down there in terms of like what we yeah, need to shoot. I just, I Unless you guys have technical questions for me, because then we can move on to the last part of it. Uh, I think I don't have any technical questions because all I have in this project was trust for you two guys to figure out the technicals. And I know that I messed up a little bit with your schedule, with running away with all your lenses in a very sensitive time at a very sensitive location. (laughs) And you didn't have access to your lenses at the time you needed them. So all I did in this project... That that doesn't need to be mentioned. It's fine. (laughs) That's fine. What yeah. she's talking about was, um, think, you know, think, we, we, we want to get B-roll of other um, uh, writers and um, vendors of the Chronicle. And so we went in another day to pick up the B-roll. Um, and uh, you just never know when things are going to happen. I mean, because um, it was a ENG sort of thing, right? It was a news gathering sort of thing. So we were just posting out there during... Um, you know, like an hour window that we had to film them. And uh, what Yaz was talking about was uh, during that, there were a few moments where people were interacting and donating and having a good time talking to these vendors. And unfortunately, the lens I needed was was, was uh, not around because Yaz had that. Because And it's not for a bad thing because she felt so bad for someone that she went inside with a West Side Market to... Buy, buy them a cup of coffee so how can you get fucking mad at that you know so here i am pissed off she comes out and then i find out that that's what she was doing and i'm like all right well i'm an asshole thank you i <laughs> just want to take this moment to thank you for your patience and like your understanding because i get it i messed up so bad and i never in, i never forget what you told me after that incident that you told me that okay you know you know, you know that we are a team. We are this in together. And the first priority for all of us should be the project and the team, not the surroundings, because it's not a usual setting. It's not a usual time. We have a very limited time, and we have to make sure that the priority for us is taking care of each other as a crew, not like another homeless people asking for food or I know that I tried to be like nice, but now I think about it again and again. I think that I was very foolish because I neglected my responsibility at that moment to take care of my team. And it's okay. Of all the, of all the reasons, though, you like had a you know you had a, a very a touching reason. I mean, I've been doing this enough so i'll give you some reasons where i found people missing uh i've had a guy who uh in a san francisco shoot walked around the corner to grab a shot of i don't know what like a shot of jack daniels or some shit he disappeared to drink for for 10 minutes i've had other people disappear to smoke you know so uh it is a big thing with me is because a lot of times when you're filming something like this um you know, where it's not a set, it's not a movie, it's not you, it's not your production, you're dealing with real life. Um, sometimes you only have one shot at things, you know? So um, um, it's a big deal to um, know who your team is when you're out there and uh, get each other's back as much as possible. But at the same time, I never want you to compromise who you are. And what you wanted to do was like a sweet and nice thing. So, um, you know, uh, I'm glad that that's who I'm dealing with, and I'm glad you didn't disappear to go get a glass of wine or something. <laughs> you know, it wasn't for a reason. Like that. Behind the bushes, go get one of those crepes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So if you are uh, done with the technicals, and now we talked about a little bit of oh, that no. we had, how about talk a little bit about the challenges of like doing these time up types of like 
short uh, and intensive, I mean, short time intensive projects. I just like mentioned, write down a few things to, I just want to go over them quickly, if you don't mind. Uh, go for it. Okay, so the first thing you have in mind is that when you have a very limited time to do something like that, you it's not only you you have a limited time it's also your subjects as like mike and angelo our main character has a very also like he has his own life so he has also a limited time frame or schedule to work with us so in order to have if it have an effective communication with him to realize what is the best time for us to shoot with him we have to take his like personal like um uh, schedule also in mind and we and couldn't that goes without it. saying right yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah that couldn't be so that means that we couldn't be too pushy to like enforce him to like do an interview in a certain time but i we couldn't also be that much flexible so it was a it was a challenge to find the right day because if you guys remember at the beginning we supposed to have a meeting with him like on a monday of our like but we realized that our pre-production is still not at the stage that we could conduct uh, a full interview with him on a monday so we had to switch that day to later that week and uh it was a challenge for all of us to work with angelo and it takes us all i try to say is that you have to be patient and you have to uh try your best and at not giving or conveying the sense of pressure to the uh, to your subject because if they feel they are pressured and if they feel they are not respected or if they feel that you only see them as like just like a subject that uh, sorry as like an object for your project or your purpose it's not going to work you have to make sure that you convey to them that how and why their presence is so important to you and your project and why you cannot continue without their help so i think that was the part that uh I think or what you do is you just get a bomb ass producer like yeah so just handle all that shit for you <laughs> yeah but this mm. is like i i I, uh, I like to agree with what you say but i also had a like hard time to figuring out how i have to tell him that oh no because after we told angelo that we can we are not prepared to shoot on monday he told us that oh the only the first available time for him to shoot is friday and it was way too late for yeah, us. Yeah, and it wasn't ideal because we knew we wanted to, we knew the bones, the skeleton of this piece is going to require us um, getting that interview first. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Because in a way, depending on, uh, you know, what we are able to extract from that interview with Angelo also kind of changes our trajectory. Because we do want to stay open, but also, you know, specifically what's going to um, stand out to you and be important also does kind of i mean there's editing happens before you edit editing happens in pre-production mm -hmm. editing happens while you're shooting and then editing happens when you're in post-production too so we you know we knew that um we wanted to get the uh the the main major interview first so that we can take it into the nle see what we have um, and then make any refinements if we needed to and we needed to because if we didn't do the Angelo interview first. If we waited for that interview on a Friday, which would be the end of the week, which would be deadline time, yeah, we the, wouldn't have figured that we needed additional uh, sound bites from somebody else, in this case, Tony, until it was too late. Because by that time, it would be the weekend and we'd be screwed and we'd have to toy around with other sort of like narrative options and it would have created a headache. So yeah, it was and the vital. Deadline, deadline was Monday. Right. So it was it was vital to us to get that um, up front, and so you know we bring this problem to Yaz and say he can take care of it, and then she pulls it off, and Angelo meets us for the interview. Yeah, so it's also a special shout out to Angelo who was so like 
he's the best. He he was he tried and, to and, be flexible. And, and Molly and Chris, I know we gave them all props mm -hmm. earlier. Yes. But just yeah. everyone we dealt with on this project were super cool. All the vendors that we interacted with, you know, hanging mm -hmm. out in front of West Side Market. Um, they were all super cool. They were all, yeah, they were all really friendly and really willing to work with us. And I think the only issue we had was the, um, I don't know if there were security, but the people over at West oh. End Market, the um, yes. building uh, managers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was my other also, like, I think. All right, why don't they, you talk about that then, yes. Okay, so. Hey, if you guys don't mind, I'm going to. I, this is my third cup of coffee, so I'm a. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a. I already know what happened, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna take a break, and I'll be right back in like a minute. Just go ahead and talk, yes. Okay, so we ran into a little bit of a problem also uh, mm -hmm. because we were like shooting uh, at the West Side Market, and uh, you know, Sarah and I were working <laughs> until we saw like two staff of uh, the two staff city enemies uh, or it's like, it's like security staff from yeah, the West Side Market. So, but they were working for the city also. They mm -hmm. came and said that this is not, you cannot film here. You need permission. You need a specific permission. And unless you have that specific type of permission, you are not allowed to film. And my, I remember my like uh, <laughs> first impression was like, yeah, sure. Give me the numbers of the people who I need to talk to, uh, to them and I will persuade them <laughs> to let us shoot because we are like an independent team. We don't have a production budget and we cannot pay. And we're not making any profit. We are not making any profit and we cannot pay even like zero, I mean, basically zero dollar. Well, in, uh, in Ohio, you can film on public property without any permits. So, yeah, and, and this is what we were thinking, but they tried to convey to us that this is not a public property. This is like the property of city of Cleveland. Mm -hmm. So this is not considered a public property. So we ran into that problem, and my approach was like that to try to communicate with all the uh, possible uh, like uh, parties involved here, which is like the Cleveland Film City, uh, Cleveland Film uh, Com Cleveland Film Commission, because the city of Cleveland just sent me over them, and uh, I like it was super easy to also like talk with them and persuade them that we don't need a we don't need a permit to basically shoot here, and I think that in that regard we have been lucky because. Cleveland is such a small city that it doesn't take that much time for you to like uh, do the communication for something like that. If we were like shooting in San Francisco, who knows how much time it would take for us to get back and forth between like different parties within the city of San Francisco. But because city of Cleveland, it's kind of smaller and they are less filming project happening here. Um, it was fast and quick, so we could resolve that. And we were upfront. We were like giving them full. Uh, I gave them full uh, information on us and the scope of the project that we are doing. So they said it would be fine. We don't need a permit. And the other, okay. So this is the last of my items. This is the last item on my. Hi guys. Yeah. Could you hear me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I couldn't hear my cat also. I thought that we lost the audio for a moment. Okay, so the last item I had on my list, and it was the last of on the last piece of unfortunate series for us is the weather. When you are doing your project like this in a very short amount of time, you have no control over the weather. And I remember the last day that we supposed to shoot some B-rolls of Angelo. We had to be at Westside Market from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. to shoot him. And we all woke up around like 5, 5 ish in the morning, and outside was a blizzard. <laughs> it was snowing like crazy. So I talked with Angelo, and he told me that he is coming. He, he, plan, he, he planned to go back home. 
he has plan he had plans to go yeah back. i mean because he was going to mm-hmm. be there there was like a window that he was going to be there right like yes a four hour window and uh so we were going to head over with like an hour or two towards the end of that window but mm-hmm. it was just so shitty outside that he had to leave uh, and yeah. we don't blame him at all it's just like yeah you never know i mean um in especially in the cleveland area that's something that i learned because you know you can pretty much guarantee it's like 70 degrees out in california and it's going to be decent weather um but yeah i mean i think by the afternoon like shit cleared up and so i mm-hmm. think sarah and i were out in the field at location um that day like later on that day or something? i think yes i think so and we were able to film other vendors mm-hmm. um because it just it cleared up um so like quickly you know so that it's it's cleveland craziness if you don't yeah. like the weather wait an hour is what i hear yep that's <laughs> what everyone says <laughs> um yeah i um are you done yes with yes that the I, last I think it was some of the challenges that uh we ran into during the shooting i'll, I'll add a few like uh technical challenges i i guess you know so um i think I think one of the reasons why attention was drawn the first day, because you can either go through the whole process of getting permission first or just do it and then apologize later if you get caught. Unfortunately, this is what a lot of people do. Um, So I think we did the best we could in in preparation, but um, we were unaware that people at the West Side Market were going to stop us. And I think part of the reason why they stopped us was, you know, brought out the... um, the bigger camera on that first shoot you know we had monopods big lenses Mm -hmm. so you're going to draw a lot of attention it always happens it's funny because you can use your gear to get into some places but at the same time you can also draw attention negatively in in that Mm -hmm. respect so we actually used two different cameras because the second time we went there i just brought a smaller camera the sony a7r2 um yeah it's a little more discreet and you can get away with shooting more stuff um, without drawing attention to yourself. Um, the other thing was the um, we knew we wanted to do a lot of slow motion um, stuff, and the FS5 had um, 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 has um, the frame rate that I wanted, which is 240, 240 frames a second. But unfortunately, you do it in, in a seven. It's like a seven to ten second buffer, so you have to trigger it correctly. So I fucked up a lot in the beginning because it's been a while um shooting some slow-mo when you do it live there is no take ready set action you just got to wait for a moment and then you got to hit the trigger and hope that you got the exact timing right so um uh in order to save time too we didn't shoot with uh xavc um 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 uh xavc um uh codec uh, everything was fed through a monitor, which also drew attention because you have this big ass screen on on top of your camera too. Um, but we shot everything, I believe, in ProRes. Um, and uh, I think the toughest thing is just not having a full crew. You know, we still had to bare bones it, and uh, you know, um, everyone's uh, experienced. Uh, uh, um, um, but um, specifically, just dealing with the equipment, there's a lot of like just different like button placements you didn't know so without a crew that's really like experienced with it i think that was a a difficulty because we lost our safety Mm -hmm. uh audio um the mkh 50 we had uh angelo lobbed up and um as a safety we had a boom but unfortunately since it was so concentrated doing things i didn't notice that angelo shifted completely away from the boom mic and so we had a lot of ruffling from the lav mic and so that could have been dangerous i mean we could have easily had unusable audio clips if his if the rustling wasn't bad was bad and we didn't have safety audio and that's the most one of the most important things you can do for yourself is redundancy have safety angles have safety audio tracks and have safety archives of your shit um so you always want redundancy always want redundancy so i think those were some minor technical uh uh, issues editing went fine we used final cut because it was quick and we were on a deadline uh no fancy editings they need to export anything to to after effects um because it was just a very basic thing um any other uh let's see challenges that uh you saw sarah no, I think you guys have covered it. Okay. But overall, I think it was a great experience uh, just working with the people over there. Hopefully we can shine a light um, 
the thing is, these papers exist um, uh, in a lot of places, uh, mm -hmm. not just Cleveland. So uh, I think it's it's a great thing that they don't just highlight a problem, but they offer uh, a form of solution. It helps the vendors. It helps spread awareness. It not only helps them financially, but it helps give them a voice. And uh, I think that really affects a person's mental state. Um, so, uh, you know, check out in your neighborhood uh, if you have a vendor and if you do, uh, or a street paper, and if you do, and you got like 35 cents or a dollar to spare. Or even not, Angelo said it, right? You don't have to buy a paper. Just go talk to them. Yeah. See what yes, that Exactly. Say. Because also part of it is just like breaking the stigma around uh, like homeless people or formerly homeless people. Yeah. Some of it just like breaking through the bubble that also you built around your you and your safe oh. ward oh, around man. you. Oh, that was close. What happened? No, I looked on the upper left corner and I didn't see the recording. No, word. I'm seeing it. You are recording. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I just I looked too far uh, up into the corner. <laughs> yeah, this is your thing. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, um, I'm uh, glad that we got a chance to sort of review it. We'll uh, we'll make the video public soon enough. So if you guys want to. Um, check out that video out there and if you have any questions um feel free to join and ask yeah yeah it was a very productive uh talk that i feel we had like pretty good uh it was a pretty good like you know recapping on your own memories uh also so for me it was just like very beneficial because i totally forgot some of like the hard um, like parts that we we've been, we've been to for this project, and after I was like writing down or prepping my notes for this session today's session, I was like, oh my gosh, shit, we have done a lot for this. It was a lot of pressure at that time, but now all I have is a good memory of that project. So, but we yeah. did a lot of work, and I just want to mm -hmm. like give you again, guys, a huge thank you for like working so open-minded for being so open-minded at first and also being so patient with each other and tolerating each other's idea because when you don't have a lot of time to figure out pre-production stuff it's very important or crucial to work effectively with your team and reach like a conclusion uh, let's say yeah. well I think we we're, we're, we're both like or not both we're all kind of you know aware enough like we've seen enough reality like shows and stuff <laughs> like when there's like a challenge like a puzzle challenge and like all eight of them are trying to solve it it never goes well you know so whenever there's a time constraint um, you know it's uh, you just kind of have to be honest with yourself and streamline and if someone has a great idea like sarah bringing up the cleveland street chronicle you just got to go with it um you know yaz taking charge um with the scheduling and and contacting neoc and and uh and and angelo um is super important too you know yeah. so i'm happy that i was yeah. uh 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 you know a part of this i'm happy with our product i'm um more happy with the fact that um we chose a subject that in retrospect is um, still a very deserving and I hope they um, you know are able to um, sort of get a more uh, get more awareness and I hope we contributed to that in, so. in some way shape or form so I hope yeah. so yeah and I think it was e also easier to do this project because I think we're all passionate about it um, like passion so passionate about like we all volunteered for Habitat for Humanity, which the housing inequality issues is like related to the street newspaper and um, the homeless and formerly homeless individuals who are part of it. Um, so I think that just made the whole process like a lot easier and we were 
really like excited about it and passionate and yeah and I think we came out with something great um that will hopefully help Nyok and all those involved yeah yeah Yeah, definitely you know it's a it's being an artist is also like a like a muscle thing too you got to treat it like stand-up comedians right you got to get the repetitions up on stage and if you don't use it you might lose it so i think it's it's great to um set yourself up to you know constantly be working on something creative and we had space and an open opportunity i'm glad that there are two other people that i mean we could have decided to do some foolish you know thing but uh the fact that all three of us jumped on the opportunity when we heard um about the chronicle about the street chronicle i think is a is a good sign so just don't turn evil on me guys because so far i view you guys as like good pure-hearted people it would be a m Shyamalan plot twister if you guys end up being evil devils reincarnated <laughs> what are you talking about you have been the most patient mentor in terms of like teaching a rookie like me how to interview people for those who don't know mike is an interview ninja that this is how he called himself (laughs) you can see him melting away now (laughs) thanks for watching the podcast guys (laughs) we'll see you next time Uh, no. Well, okay. Well, I'm uh, glad that uh, we were able to do this because I've been Mm -hmm. wanting to share this um, with you guys. We'll um, put the video up uh, and then we will meet again for another podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know about you guys, but unless you guys have anything else, we're going to do an outro, say goodbye. Yeah. Uh, I have one thing. Yeah. I want to introduce our special guest star. Oh, has she been in there? Oh, hold on, let me full screen that. She's she's been in she's been in here all the time. Oh my god, look at that face! Look at this. She she was just sleeping, and I woke her up. I'm terrible. Look at that but face. This is Lucy. Wave, my puppy. Lucy, can you wave with your oh, paws? Hi. Oh, <laughs> she she shy. <laughs> <laughs> my Lucy was somewhere here, out here, but. I'm not yes. going to. You're the feline Lucy. <laughs> yes. We've got the canine and we then have, the feline we, Lucy. We, got, we have mini Lucys. <laughs> and they're yeah. all adorable. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> so cute. I totally forgot at the start of this. I was like, <laughs> Lucy was trying to leave. And I was like, no, she must be a part of this. And then I almost forgot. <laughs> she did leave. but She came back right before Aww. we started. And she's been sitting in her bed by my feet this entire time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Very cool. Cute. Okay, guys. Well, uh, we'll be back with another podcast. Don't you worry. We're we're gonna watch more stuff ourselves. Mm-hmm. We're gonna come up with uh, interesting, hopefully, things to talk about because this is something that we want to continue on. Hopefully, you guys like our steady improvement uh, in terms of like uh, the technology. I got a whole new house. Uh, if you guys can't tell, with a whole new kitchen. <laughs> so, I mean, so just beautiful. for this. Just for this virtual <laughs> podcast. So, I'm sure, you know what, next time I might I might buy a theater and, and broadcast from there. So, just keep an eye out. Yeah. We, got exciting, <laughs> we got exciting things in the pipeline. We, got, we definitely have opinions to talk about with you guys. So, hopefully you join us for the next one. <laughs> yes, it's great to have you, our producer extraordinaire, Sarah and Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for joining <laughs> us with all your expertise and stuff i haven't gone around uh watching picard but uh um i gotta check that series out based on your we'll recommendations watch so watch some stuff guys take care stay healthy and we will see you next time thanks we'll see you bye, bye. Please feel free to like and subscribe. Ask these people. Yeah, hit yeah. that button. We want to hear from you. It's so easy. Mm-hmm. And you will not get disappointed. Yes. Please cut that last part. Yeah.